are with uh, Jerry, Jerry Asher. Jerry Asher, and we got the uh, 100 mile per hour Prius. Yes, the plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. This is Piev number 76, a cow car project. And it's Darren Overby's vehicle. Darren's with the San Francisco Electric Vehicle Association. He's put this little baby together, and we have different little things even to push the manufacturers to get the plug-in hybrids on the market, and Austin Energy is also part of that. So, that's a little bit what we have. You can see that we're not fooling around. There is the plug right here. Right on, uh, let's uh, take a look inside. Here's the plug, it's pretty hard to do. Oh, did it easy. Plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, right there. We can be pouring in gas at 350 a gallon, four, five, six dollars, or we can plug in for under a dollar, so maybe at 75 cents. Could be like pennies a mile for hybrid electrics. And with a plug-in, you get lots more. So let's take a look at the battery pack. and. Uh... First off, here's the, the diagram for the battery pack. Darren Ovi put this together. So this is the blueprint. When we take out the blueprint, we now can show you just exactly 20 lead silicon batteries, an innovative battery type that's being looked at. We haven't got our instrumentation set up for this vehicle yet, so we're not quite in the electric vehicle mode yet. But 20 batteries, battery box, the, the, the charger. This is the charger, and that may be repositioned a little bit. All these things supplement what's right under here, the lithium, the uh, not lithium, but the nickel metal battery pack. That's the original Prius battery pack. Yeah, that's what stays in. And this is all the new retrofitted battery pack. This has all been retrofitted. Okay. Or actually, we might even not go retro because we haven't taken anything out. We're just using conversions. We've made this now a plug-in, so it means it's pure electric. Hopefully for the 20 miles that you'll run around the city and then recharge and use that through the city. And then when you go on the open road, maybe you get your Prius 50 miles per gallon. When you add those figures together and divide by the gasoline, you're looking at getting 100 miles per gallon with electricity. And our electricity should be much more sustainable, easily controlled in one source. So this is the whole concept. Now, if you can look down, we have calcars.org website, and we have a do-it-yourself-milepergallon.com website that you can go ahead and go to. And these would be um, where you can see further documentation photos, web blogging, people like here in Reno who are coming out to see what this is. So let's look at the uh, inner uh, computer display. Okay. <coughs> so right now what we're doing is, is doing the regular charge up on the uh, Prius and show the screen. And right now you can see the screen. Is it? Yep. Okay, and the screen says, okay, we got two things. We can either show consumption, and the engine just kicked on, so we could see that it's charging the battery a little bit. Now we're gonna go to the CAN view. That's the computer area network view, this whole system here. And now we get the standard can view monitor setup. So we're going to go first to the maximum minimum reading and you can see some things will um, jump in and out as the engine is going. You can see the engine RPM down here it is 1325, 1225 and uh, the whole scheme is, is working to monitor high and low and then you see the battery state of charge is just at 57 percent. Uh, it's not quite the accurate scheme of things because we will run the electric mode from 60 to 64 um, percent state of charge. But let's go to the other views here. You can see the engine still on. Things are get, still giving read out. And it says right down here, here is your ICE, your internal combustion engine mode. Could read 
RPM. Electric vehicle parameters, EV. This one at the very top is just the little auxiliary battery and it's pretty much all, all top, tapped out. But we'll still be doing other things with the state of charge batteries when we get instrumentation set up to monitor these uh, innovative batteries. Now there was a, uh, a little program or something you had to do to the computer because usually at 35 miles an hour right. that kicks well, on the this, engine. This is all the, the program that goes with it. Uh, Cal cars and others can, can go ahead and give you the background on some of that. Right now we have on the screen an interesting little one that is kind of interesting to me, but it's in the data package, so somebody gets probably excited about all these numbers jumping. But the real interesting one is the last one, the DTC, the Diagnostic Trouble Codes, so that you can get readout from some 24 computers, I believe, on board, so that you can get readouts from the engine, the hybrid itself, the battery. And so this is, this is all computerized. And this, I think, makes the difference of what we call the CAN view, looking at the CAN bus getting feedback from all these particular instruments. Hey, what we have here is the end. It's easy enough to pull out the plug once you're charged up. Yep. It takes all of about five seconds. Well, maybe ten if you're really using a lot of time. Once the vehicle is set to go, it gives you your all electric range, let's say about 20 miles. Could be less if you're going up hills or whatever. This is the idea of the 100 mile per gallon that you get all this in-town mileage right. using hopefully a green source of electricity, and therefore you save the gas. Yeah. Now, what I'm doing is working a bit for Cal Cars here as a volunteer, but also Austin Energy. Just the idea that we want to push the manufacturers to get these vehicles out on the market as soon as possible. Right. The battery technology should be there. So I've taken on myself to do this plug-in hybrid electric vehicle all around America, PF 3A. Right now, I'm on the little Southwest pilot project going to the chapters. So I've gone to uh, North Texas Electric Auto Association. We're reviving the Albuquerque Electric Vehicle Association gone to the Tucson Electric Vehicle Association, the Phoenix Electric Auto Association, the Flagstaff Electric Auto Association, Las Vegas, and last night we are here with the very own Reno Electric Auto Association, but you also have it as the Alternative Transportation, Transportation Club. Yep. Okay. Now when you say PF3A, is that? PHEV3A, that's the plug-in hybrid electric vehicle okay. all around America all around America, PH3A. Project, when I have my car converted over to get strategic alliances, partnerships, sponsors, and go to all 50 states, getting all 48 chapters, four, 1,400 plus members on okay. board. How many cars, is this a one of a kind, or is there, has there been this two This is number three? 76, this is 76. PF 76. Okay, so 76 of these have been done. Right. Okay. And, hopefully tomorrow, the father of the modern hybrid, Dr. Andy Frank at the University of California at Davis, will give it his blessing because that's what we're looking to link right. up tomorrow. Andy Frank at UC Davis. I know that okay. name. Okay, well, great. Um, thank you okay. very much. Thank you, yeah. Peter. Here we are.